let us talk about the adjacent channel interference in GSM so adjacent interference in GSM what is the meaning of the adjacent channel interference so as we know that means we have a specific frequency band and inside the specific frequency band we have to use those frequency uh, for a BCCH plan we have to use those frequency for TCH plan and uh, if wherever we are using I mean uh, the frequencies let's say if I am using the F1 frequency over here I, I use the F2 frequency at certain distance as far as possible but sometime due to the limitation of uh, the capacity requirement and uh, the coverage requirement you have to put lot of sites and uh, because of the limitation of the frequency spectrum availability you have to reuse them at a certain distance right so you can see here we have a two cells and uh, one cell has f1 frequency other cell is f2 frequency and because of the propagation or uh, the height of the antenna or for any reason um, assume that this is this, this this location where I am standing here and uh, currently I suppose to get the you know signal strength or uh, the dominance from the F1 but somehow this F2 is also coming here you know so in this this location means um, when we say adjacent channel that is C by A so the carrier divided by adjacent channel so in this case uh, let's say the F1 is my uh, carrier and uh, the F2 is my adjacent channel so uh, let us see uh, what exactly we have to meet the C by A in the GSM so C by A supposed to be equal or greater than minus 9 dB what is the meaning of this minus 9 dB right so let us simplify this equation more in detail you will see C I can write down like C by A if you maintain even minus 9 dB is good across the network and here uh, they are in the dB so I can write down C minus A equal to minus 9 dB so I can write down uh, my adjacent channel should be C plus 9 dB or or less than that so let's see I mean take example here so let us assume that uh, somewhere here where I am standing right now in this uh, particular location you can see that I am very close to the F1 frequency so let's say it's F1 is cell A and the F2 is cell B okay so assume that the cell A uh, is what uh, my carrier right now and cell B is my adjacency right now adjacent channel right now so let me assume, uh, assume the example over here cell A uh, let's say if I am getting NIC 80 dBm which is considerably good outdoor signal and uh, let's find out I mean what should be uh, so this is F1 frequency from the A cell so let's find out that uh, what we supposed to get the B at that location right so uh, let's put this I mean so so the adjacent channel uh, adjacent uh, level of the B should be an AKT plus 9 dB so that is neck 71 dBm so you can see the B is my adjacent channel which is having F2 frequency is coming up to neck 71 still I can say this is a good uh, good RF environment where the B is not creating much interference in, in, uh, in uh, to the cell cell A which has F1 frequency so to understand this I mean uh, 
so now the b uh, b should be up to b should be equal or less than uh, equal or less than 71 dBm right so what is the meaning of this 71 dBm or less than let us draw uh, the, the standard you know uh, the scale here so this is what uh, your Rx level scale Rx level and let me write down that uh, you as you know that it, it's it start from neck uh, 47 is the strongest and the neck 110 is the poor one right so you can see here um, in my condition right now my my adjacent channel is having 71 dbm and why my carrier which is is having neck 80 dbm right so as long as I mean if I stay right if I if I stay uh, in this range if I stay uh, let's say neck 70 or if I stay here uh, let's say neck 72 or neck 73 somewhere here I mean in this range is fine I mean that's okay means the adjacent sale up to up to to 71 will not create much problem to me right but if this adjacent cell B is a cell B and this is cell A uh, this F1 frequency this is F2 frequency if the cell B is coming stronger and stronger as I am moving towards the B direction and then if the cell B is going beyond 71 so it's it's maybe 70 or maybe 69 or maybe it goes up to whatever level then it, it will start creating the problem so you can see from the scale I mean up to 70 for this example is I am safe more than uh, 70 it's not safe so this is what the green color if is the adjacent stay here I mean 70 or below 70 I am safe you know and and here in this range I am unsafe right here is I am unsafe so this is what the adjacent channel I mean you should try to uh, you know reduce the uh, such a interference as much as possible but you know that means it is uh, not possible right it is not possible to maintain this adjacent channel in so many locations so anyway uh, but it is not much uh, problematic you know the co-channel is very much serious and we should focus more on co-channel and adjacent channel we should try to minimize as much as possible right so remember this the co-channel that is we call it is a C by I on the same frequency coming from the other cells at the far distance should be greater than if you can maintain it's nowadays it is not possible as sites are very close by and the distance of the intersites are not much more than 400 500 or even some cases even less than 300 meter in the uh, the, the metro towns or the dense cities and C by A should be equal or greater than NIC 9 dB so please remember this too I mean this is co-channel this is adjacent channel now by understanding the co and adjacent channel this is the entire activity what you need to do in the in the optimization is to manage this co channel and adjacent channel interference you have to manage this interference in the GSM right so uh, the RF engineer has to ensure that you 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 maintain this co channel as low as possible throughout our area and uh, if possible to maintain the adjacent channel also right so this is what about the adjacent channel interference I will explain you more about how this this you know uh, to achieve the interference within the limit okay so let's see in the next lecture